It's part five, the final part of London in World War Two. Um, we are revising GCSE history, warfare, historic environment, and, and today we're going to look at propaganda and censorship. We're going to briefly look at civilian morale, things like mass observation, what the government did with newspapers, and that whole morale thing of keeping calm and carrying on. So the government was clearly very concerned about the effect that German bombing would have on the spirit and attitude of civilians. There was a war to fight here, a big one, and if Britain was to survive, its people were going to have to pull together and their spirits were going to have to be kept up. And that is what Churchill certainly recognised. Um, and obviously, if you listen to any Churchill speeches, if you've seen the film Darkest Hour, that whole notion that Britain would never surrender very much embodied that Londoner spirit during this period. First few weeks of the Blitz was very, very difficult for Londoners. It was a real shock in spite of the preparations. It particularly affected the east end of London, where the docks were. Um, this is a mainly working class area. There weren't many underground stations. Finding shelter from bombs wasn't easy. And class tensions did start to surface there. Um, and the government was pretty concerned about the anger of EastEnders, the, the division of the people, and again, how this might affect morale and undermine the war effort. So therefore, clearly, morale was going to be something key if Britain was going to endure. Now, the Ministry of Information founded a Home Intelligence Department, and that, that job was to check how morale amongst ordinary people was holding up during World War II. Um, the Home Intelligence Department reported every week to the government, and some of their findings came from a group writing in diaries about their daily lives. And this group was known as Mass Observation, and served to give the government an insight into people's fears and thoughts and any rumours that were going around about the war. As far as newspapers were concerned, the government um, censored them. They made sure that newspapers did not print information that was negative or might serve to undermine the morale of the population of the people of London. For example, it delayed announcing the V2 rocket attacks later in the war and did not report on big tragedies such as the deaths at Bethnal Green Tube Station in 1943. Propaganda, of course, was used to help motivate the population of London, posters and leaflets, advertised campaigns such as Dig for Victory, which we've looked at already, the enforcement of the blackout, and tried to get Londoners to follow all the rules that were important. In cinemas, newsreels helped to get these messages across and urge people to keep calm and carry on. Also at the cinema, inspiring films were shown, such as survival stories like In Which We Serve, about the crew of a sinking Navy ship. Radio was still popular and also served as a means for the government to get news across and messages and information, as well as provide relief from the war in the form of music and comedy. All in all, the British government knew that they needed to maintain morale and all these measures tried to serve that purpose, particularly in the early part of the first Blitz in September, October 1940.